In France, we, we have a chance that there is a French association whose name is VIA that helps um, young or unknown designers to build a prototype if they have an idea that they judge good. So, um, on a carefree day, I had the idea of a new time display. Here you can see on the screen, it is an analogical display, time display. This is a, a numerical time display. This is a kind of a Japanese uh, clock which com shows twice the same information. And my idea was to combine the both display and putting on each end display that shows the numbers corresponding to the end position. The displays need um, electricity connections which comes from the, uh, the axe of the hands. So it was really complicated, it took me a long time to, to build it with engineers in the city of France which is dedicated to clock um, buildings. But finally we made a prototype that was shown on the French fair and also the Milan uh, furniture fair which is the most important in the world. So maybe you did not understand the, the project, which is not important, the other projects are more simple to understand. So there are two other pictures of the clock, and uh, so um, you can see two different hours. It is a system that can be also um, adapted to all um, user uh, system. It can be added to, to a balance, a weight balance or speed counters. It was really hard to find a prototypist to, to make it. The first prototypist I was in contact with, uh, unfortunately, his father was a clock maker and fixer, and he had told him that the system was totally stupid, so because it, sh it, it uh, shows twice the same information. And it is true, it can be stupid, but it's um, a combination that... Uh, um, provides the advantage of each uh, displays. You have the graphic, readable, uh, easy readable um, uh, display by hand, which is graphical and rapid to read, and you have the numerical, which is precise, so you can imagine that you could have it in a station or um, airport. Um, with also that uh, French uh, via associations that had helped so many French designers. Uh, I did a, a lamp. The aim was to have a, an articulated lamp, which is a stupid idea because they are always the most difficult to build. And um, the same prototypist says, you know, I'm also a teacher and I teach uh, lighting to my students and this is exactly the, the kind of project I said to my student, you should never do that. So I, I, I had the, the chance to, to, to change prototypist and met another one that was really a good one and it was uh, totally ignorant about electrical things. So it, we could do it together. He discovered that aluminium, aluminium would conduct electricity, so he almost died. But after that, <laughs> um, we could, um, he, he made it really good. So the purpose of that light was to have many combinations of um, whether a large um, light or a straight, straight light that you, you can buy just by moving the two um, reflectors. So you can see different uh, combination of um, the light can do. I had the opportunity again with that French association VIA, but they almost sometimes are stupid also, they are not always wonderful. Um, they helped me also to build um, a new project of lamp because I still, I'm always interested in articulated lamps because always hard to build and not really necessary because you not really keep moving your articulated objects. I think it's just dreams of designers, but I'm just a designer. So I am um, the same, my, the same but second beloved prototypist made the prototype following the, my designs. But when I arrived, I found it so ugly. I felt a shame of it. And especially I had chosen a, a pink, a pink color I wanted, I don't know why, uh, something to be pink, but a soft pink, 
which looks exactly like biological ham. So, <laughs> when I had the first shock and I said, oh no, I cannot show that lamp, it's so ugly. And the electrical wire was white, which looks exactly like the, the, the um, greasy part of ham. So it was really terrible. So for a long time I called it the ham lamp. And I really didn't want it to, <coughs> to be shown. But I had the chance that uh, Giulio Capellini, who directs a, a fam famous um, Italian uh, furniture and lighting company, uh, lighted it and wanted to produce it. So that was, I was lucky. Then I had the um, opportunity to spend one year in Italy, um, in Rome, where France owns uh, the French, French Academy, which is at the center of Rome. And in Italy, they have a special paper, which has uh, there are, uh, large sheets of paper with lines. And um, I was also always interested in pleated paper because they, they, you can do with them uh, light volumes with, because it structures uh, the paper and you can build volumes and they are really light. And uh, So I kept playing, I it was at the French Academy, I was given the, um, the studio of the famous uh, 19th century painter named Ingres. I don't know how you pronounce it, maybe Ingres, I don't know. But anyway, he's dead. Um, <laughs> and uh, his studio is... Um, his, really high on ceiling, six meter high on ceiling. So I was keep, I kept plating those sheets and uh, following the lines, and so I built those volume, and so I thought those would be nice, um, nice volume to be uh, turned out uh, uh, again in a light. So I, this is, this was the first prototype made of a, uh, paper, and I offered to the Capellini, director Giulio Capellini, to, to do it with them. So um, he accepted, and, uh, but I knew that, um, uh, well, for the first thing I thought that plating things was simple and that it would be really simple to produce, as I was able to produce it in my uh, studio. But in fact, a plat um, plating um, industry uh, has totally disappeared in uh, France and Europe. We are just now able to pleat the, the length of a skirt, but not uh, higher than one meter, one meter twenty. So as those lamps are higher two meter and ten, it was really hard to find some makers that would be able to do it, because you have to pleat it in one uh, direction and then to pleat it again in another direction, which would have been really possible during the beginning of the, the 20th centuries, where the, um, there were some petticoat makers and who were really able to do that. But now it's not possible anymore in Europe. So, well, it's almost not possible. So I've been contacting all pleat makers in France and Italy, and finally I just found one, and uh, who, who has just three kilometers away from the Capellini um, office, because I, they, they are usually uh, build, they are used to build uh, furniture, not lights of that kind. So I thought it would be a good point if, if there would be the makers would be just three kilometers away from the office because I know little Italians. And um, so the first time this is, was the first prototype, and that was shown as a melon fair. Ma melon fair. And finally, this is the best that we did. So it's totally changed from my first prototype, but now it's, um, it's quite good. And the light is nice, because light through fabrics is, uh, can be nice. A friend of mine was asked by French company Bacara to work on the, the famous and best-seller uh, glass called Harcourt glass, which was designed during the first part of the 19th century. Um, so I, I decided to turn upside down that glass and uh, to, to, to make it as a, a candle holder. So the, the glass, the base, what used to be the base was drilled to, 
that, so that you can put with safety a candle. And uh, the container, which is now turned into the base, is covered with a thin uh, layer of, crystal, of colored crystal, which look like champagne white or mint. Here you can see me again with my obsession, articulated uh, lamp combines with, combined with pleated things. You can see I'm working in a clean space, well organized. It's not my space. I'm always using the, the laboratory of France because at that time I was having such a small studio, um, so small that uh, I could not do anything in it. So this is... Um, my project was to build um, a lamp that would come... Yes, I like that picture. Uh, that would come from 40 centimeters up to 180 centimeters. And the purpose was that the light will grow up with the height of the um, lamp. So, it was, uh, so it's made of... Um, so solid uh, paper, um, pleated paper that you cannot, uh, I don't know how you say. And um, the, the difficult thing to do was to find the, to make the structure, the internal structure is made with telescopic antennas. Antennas. And uh, it was really hard to find some antennas that would have the right size because um, Usually, the telescopic antennas that you can find on radios, they are at the maximum uh, one meter high. So, uh, every time I was asking to antennas makers if they would have some bigger, they were telling me, but you should use some parabolic antennas. They are really better and you can, give, you can get many channels. Whereas, um, I, finally, um, I finally found a makers in... A, in Germany that was connected to an Asian maker that could make some uh, one meter and 80 centimeter high antennas. Um, I had to order, to make some order and uh, to open the doors, close the door of the closet. So I wanted to do a furniture that would be always opened and always closed at the same times. So my I made uh, some containers, which walls are made with industrial brushes, which are called brush strips, as you can see, uh, they are used for the entrance door of that hotel. They are at, at the, the uh, down parts of the door, there are some uh, industrial brushes. So I asked some makers to make them really longer. It was really hard because um, their machines were not always able to do with such long uh, hairs, so it was a long time to find them. Uh, but I got them done, and uh, I thought that uh, you, they, they could be interesting for an Italian, um, another Italian company whose name is Edra, conducted by, uh, directed by Massimo Morozzi, who came last year. And um, I didn't know him, but I, I thought that this project, could, he could like it. This is the first prototype that were made, but it's not important. Because, yes, he accepted to produce them. Then, uh, looking at the um, um, brush strip, I was interested by the, the brush strip, uh, just fiber taken in a U-shaped metal. So, I looked at that U-shaped metal, and I wanted to... Um, I, I, I wanted to do such a material which would be the combination of a U-shaped metal with um, U-fold stirred by foam and covered by leather. The purpose was to build a chair so that the, the chair would be entirely built with that um, material because usually now for cost reasons, chairs are always having metallic uh, legs. And then they just become different from one to another by the, the seat on the, the, the back. So I, this is my first really bad tries I made in another friend's uh, studio with uh, thin aluminium uh, sheets of metal that are used by printers and I, that I buy. So there are different tries. And... Um, so this, 
is the final um, chair. And uh, so you can see that there is a whole structure built with a U-shaped thing, and it is filled, u stood by the uh, foam covered with leather. Again, I am with pleated thing. Now, it's, um, I, I found in, um, in Holland um, a fabric maker that was uh, making some already pleated fabrics, which is really interesting because it is um, a double-sided fabric which has an a outside colored uh, side. And the internal side is, is covered with aluminium, so it's good for reflecting the light. So I, I built up um, large hanging laps, which are one meter large and one meter twenty high, and they are really they are just uh, attached on a, a light wired structure, and you can also fold them uh, fold them up or out or off. I don't know how you say. For, uh, unfold them, and uh, and uh, it's really it's important for a commercial reason to to be able to build some huge things, but but for the transport that will be really small to be transported. So here you can see there is only the fabric that can be taken in just uh, one small tube, and um, this is another model and. Uh, those are the different uh, models I did for, for that project. And they will be produced, I did them three years ago, but now they will be produced this year by Italian uh, company. Because usually you always, uh, even if you are French, you, are, you begin to be produced by Italian. And then friends may say, oh, maybe we should find her phone number, but they don't. I, but I don't have to be un honest because I also won a prize given by uh, Paris, uh, by the city of Paris, a prize for design, uh, creation and design, and I won a lot of money for me. And uh, I was offered to have an exhibition at the Museum of Art Decorative, which is part of the Louvre. And I had uh, um, uh, an exhibition in a small room, which is uh, 50 square meters. And so here you can see all the uh, small uh, models I made out of paper to, to figure out how I would uh, put them in that, uh, in that small room. So this was the entrance of the exhibition where you can see my different project lightings and pleated uh, hanging lamps and brush strips furniture. Um, there is one new fashion in France or Europe, I don't know. People want the wallpaper to come back and they want uh, to put back something on their walls, which I will never do, but I have to think of the other people, I was told. Uh, so <laughs> I... Uh, the, um, I had to, the, 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 there are stickers, they are printed on a sheet which is uh, 50 centimeter by 50 centimeter. So I just drawn, uh, designed some frame, but sewn in uh, perspective. And the important point for me was that the, the pin would be apparent, that you can see the pin, which is uh, uh, rather absurd because a well conceived frame you don't see the pin that uh, can uh, attach him on the wall. So you can, you can display the frame this way or also put some pictures in it. They were happy, so they, were, they asked me to do another stickers, but the theme was digital. Let's go to another project. I was asked for the first time by a French company that now has disappeared, <laughs> um, named Gade, to do some... Um, a pot for plant that would be made in roto, in plastic, uh, in injection plastic, in water molding. So I just, this is a wonderful 3D I made because uh, this thing is one of the best I did. So this is a real bad 3D. But after that, they decided to they change the makers and they wanted to make it in ceramic. So 
here is the result. So it's, I wanted it to be a large pot because it's, uh, you don't have a, a big choice for a large pot. You have a big choice for a round or square pot, but large pot you don't have. And I wanted them to have some fit so that if you put them on the floor, they don't look like being uh, forgotten uh, since uh, 15 years. So they, they were coming in black and white. Black was not my choice at all, but I was obliged to, as it often happened. For, um, for an exhibition last year in Milan, I was asked with some other designers to uh, conceive a souvenir of Italy. I found it was really difficult because uh, it's hard not to, to fall into cliché and kitschy things. So I don't know if uh, for you who are so far of Italy and Europe, it's well known as it is for us, but the shape of Italy is really well known because it looks like a, a shoe or a high shoe. I don't know how you spell it. So I wanted to to use that shape and also to do some daily objects that were firstly maybe used by Italian but now are worldwide used. So I designed a pasta drainer which holds would be um, following the shape of Italy and also a cheese grater. So if you put the cheese on Sicily, you don't get a lot of uh, <laughs> parmesan. So this is one of the results, and uh, it's interesting to know that the only way to do the prototype was with rapid prototyping, because there might be a 2,000 drill in it. So this is also another example of my 3D level, but it was just to explain what I wanted to do for the second French company that came in contact with me. How comes? We don't know. Um, I just wanted to do a small side table who's, uh, that could come from uh, 40 centimeters up to 61 centimeters, so that uh, if, you, if you decide to eat in front of the TV, you, you can have the, the, the good height to, to put your tray on it. And, but what I wanted was that one could change the, the height of the table just with one hand, one hand. Because if you have a tray, you cannot do it, it was difficult. So I wanted it to be comfortable. So you had just to, to take up the ring and that you can see my engineer designs. I was thinking of for a long time for all those process. So you take up the ring, so there is a spring that goes Scratch, and then if I take a, put a rope, oh, that's great. <laughs> well, because my, my parents were not technical at all. So I have the feeling of being not Leonard de Vinci, but some of his, um, um, like close to Edison. And uh, so I was really proud to send those drawings to the makers. But finally, they used a, a system that uh, is uh, really uh, used like for um, office chair with a, a, a gas uh, system which exists since uh, 80 years. <laughs> so this is the colors that I change on my computer because the colors that, uh, if you work for a big company like Ligne Rosé, you are obliged to accept some colors that they decide. So they decide for um, a, a green, which is not that green, because I, I changed it on my Photoshop. <laughs> it's a terribly bad-looking green, but I had no, no choice. And so, um, so this is not exactly what you would have. But it also exists in white, but they didn't want to shoot it, so I don't have a picture of it for yet. This year, for me, is the year of the tables, because I was asked by a Swedish company to, to do some objects for them, and I just, was, uh, I just wanted to do some tables. So I, those are uh, one-tenth uh, paper models, which look sometimes like poor bugs, but uh, they are really useful to me because it helps me really 
knowing what I want to do, where, where, but I don't send that pictures to makers. I change them in uh, Photoshop. I make them uh, so it's clearer, as you can see. <laughs> and uh, so after that, so it was so clear. He accepted the project. So this is one uh, scale one project. So uh, it's a combination between plywood and metal. And it exists in uh, three, three dimensions. So you can see my tries. This is in my di dining room that I turn out like a photo studio by putting some paper on the floor. <laughs> and, uh, and these are the, the final, uh, the first prototype. I never saw them. They were just uh, pictures sent by, through mail by me, uh, to me, by mail through me. And um, because they were just presented at the Swedish um, Fair Furniture, which was just uh, one week ago, and uh, I was not there. So at first I wanted that um, the metal parts would be attached to the wooden part, to the basement, with some uh, badminton rope. But it looks terribly, it looks like Chinese noodle. So we, we both decided that it was not a good idea. So we took them off and just uh, put some small glue or screws. A final project that I will uh, show you is just was just finished um, five days ago. Uh, the French uh, crystal maker Baccarat asked to several designers to build some hanging lamps using their crystal parts that they, they use for their chandelier hanging uh, lamps. There were many shapes of uh, crystal pads that we could have picked, but there were some star or diamond shaped uh, crystal. But I picked the, the spheric one because I think they were having the most interesting uh, optical effect and that they would look less jewelry or a wedding list than the other. So I wanted to, to make a combination between those crystal uh, parts with um, um, drilled metal uh, sheets. So this, is, this, this picture was just taken in the studio of a, a girlfriend of mine. And so there are bad pictures. But, um, so it's, uh, you have seven, seven times the same uh, metal shape which is, it's, it's uh, really simple, it's just a seven sha identical shape and then they are um, curved and then put together and then attach, you attach the crystal uh, things. And um, so in, in front it looks really different of the profile part and so these are some optical effects. It's really a uh, mm, little weird and the uh, reach for the um, reflection. I don't know if uh, it's the right word. And it's also nice when the light is off, which was important to me. And so, seen from the bottom. And this is the kind of uh, reflection you have in a bowl. And I am finished. <laughs>